guys, I'm Steve. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If it's your first time stopping by the channel, hit that subscribe button. Trust me, you won't regret it. If you're a returning subscriber, as always, guys, welcome back and I appreciate the support. If you haven't subscribed to the uh, True Crime channel I just started, Sinister Intent, by all means, go over there, show your support, and uh, subscribe. Videos are up, and uh, I promise they won't disappoint you. But uh, I want to talk about something that we've been talking about for the past year, and we'll continue to talk about till justice is served, the Tyree Nichols case. We are in day four, ladies and gentlemen, and it is buck wild. Now, I've been covering this story on YouTube for the past year, ever since the video came out. We've been pushing it, pushing it, pushing for justice for Tyree, all this other stuff. I went down there, first day of the trial, stayed, and uh, man, all this craziness is coming out now. And I told you before, these people acted like common thugs when they attacked and killed Tyree Nichols. And you're seeing it in court with the way they're trying to defend themselves. Guys, I got some news to drop on y'all. I'm not going to tell you. You'll see it in this uh, uh, news article. Pay specific attention to what the legal analyst says when they bring him on the show. It's everything I was telling y'all was going to happen. It's starting to happen. With a surprise. Justin Smith, Officer Justin Smith, the one that was hopping along, acting like he had his knee was hurt. And when they got in trouble and was getting fired and got arrested, he pleaded his case. Oh, I was supposed to be on PTO. My knee was hurt. I was called into work. I wasn't even supposed to work that night. Scrambling. Get him. Get him. Check this out. Today, the Memphis police lieutenant who trained the officers charged in the death of Tyree Nichols told the jury that not only did they not follow protocol while trying to handcuff him, but that the other officer should have intervened. NBC's Marissa Parra is following this and also with me, former federal prosecutor and MSNBC legal analyst Paul Butler. So what's the latest we're hearing out of court, Marissa? Hey, Chris. So you mentioned that we heard from this Memphis police lieutenant, Lieutenant Bright. Uh, this is a lieutenant who has been in law enforcement for almost 20 years. Uh, lieutenant Bright is also someone who has trained all of these officers at different times and really did a lot of training on defense tactics, use of force, uh, talked about um, the tactics on what to do at a traffic stop, how to handcuff, even things like what part of their hands they should use in certain instances. And he says that he warned his students that they could face prison time if they didn't follow these policies. So after watching the footage today, Lieutenant Wright testified that these officers who have been charged did not follow protocol and specifically said that that protocol was not followed when this uh, when Nichols was being handcuffed and that the other officers should have intervened and said, quote, to the jury, no resistance is met with no force. Little resistance is met with little force and deadly resistance is met with deadly force. Now, we understand when that footage was shown, undoubtedly something that was so hard for these family members of Nichols to watch. We actually heard from Tyree Nichols' mother just yesterday. Take a listen. Our hope is that they're found guilty uh, and to show the world that my son was a good person and he wasn't the criminal that they're trying to make him out to be. So a lot that we heard in court, Chris, this is just one day of what we're expecting to be several weeks of this trial. And as you can hear from that family, they are looking for closure. But there is a lot of time between now and when they're going to find out if they get that closure. Chris. Marissa Parra, thank you for that. So, Paul, what do you imagine the likely impact of this testimony might be? Chris, police officers are very powerful, effective witnesses in trials against other police officers. We saw this in the case of the, involving the four officers accused in the death of George Floyd. Jurors are frequently sympathetic to the difficulties of police work, and sometimes they might want to give officers a break. They might think even if the cop made a mistake, she was just trying to do her job. But what we heard today from this expert who's been on the force almost 20 years is that when these officers first approached Mr. Nichols in his car, allegedly for a traffic stop, they had their guns drawn. That's not part of protocol. And the officers uh, have said in other statements that 
Mr. Uh, Nichols wasn't cooperating. He refused to turn over when they ordered him to turn over. So the lieutenant today testified the reason for that is that he was handcuffed. And at the same time that the officers were ordering Mr. Nichols to turn over, they were kicking him in the head and he had already been maced in his face. And in fact, Paul, yesterday, the jury heard from the nurse who treated Nichols. Um, she said he was in con already in critical condition and on a ventilator when he came to the hospital. She calculated he was without a pulse for about 25 minutes. And again, the prosecutors say, and I'm going to quote them here, that they stood by his dying body and laughed. Um, the autopsy showed he died from blunt force trauma. Uh, what do prosecutors do with this testimony? Uh, there's all this video evidence from the officers who were on the scene. Chris, when you see those videos, it looks like a crowd scene, which makes it even more tragic that people didn't step up to help Mr. Nichols. They might have been able to save his life. And so officers uh, will be shown live in person to the jury. And again, that's extremely credible evidence. Now, we have seen cases in which jurors have this video evidence of alleged police brutality, and they don't convict. But one of the things we're seeing since the murder of George Floyd is prosecutors are getting savvy at how to win these cases. And most of the recent high profile cases, there have been convictions. And again, I think this uh, body cam footage is a key part. Jurors can believe their own eyes. And Chris, there's just no legal justification uh, for the way that Mr. Nichols was brutalized. We only have a minute left, Paul, but we also learned that one of the police officers, Justin Smith, is considering testifying in his own defense. And we talk about how risky it is for a defendant to testify. Why do you think he'd consider it? You know, I, I think he understands that the prosecution has a very strong case, and this might be a Hail Mary effort. There are a couple of uh, accused officers who've already pled guilty. But, Chris, what's really interesting is that even in those cases, prosecutors are ask asking for big time. For one of those cops who pled guilty, they're asking for 40 years. And so I think this other officer may be taking the stand. It's risky, but he doesn't have a lot of great options. And his lawyer seems to believe that the state has a very good case. Did y'all hear that? Did y'all hear that? They run in like rats from a burning ship. I told you. A lot of sleepless light nights now. Just like the family of Tyree Nichols had after you uh after they seen him in the hospital, after y'all said he was high on drugs, and that's he was so strong, y'all had to do him like that. They said the man was without a pulse for 25 minutes. He was on a, a, a ventilator when he went to the hospital. That's a damn shame coming from a traffic stop where they had their guns out already. He said, what did I do? What is this? He was complying and they were pulling him different ways. They had their knees on his shoulder, talking about turning over, hitting him, macing him. It was just pure bedlam and confusion to a man that was complying to you. Just thinking about this whole thing, I went and looked back. About 20 minutes ago on videos that I took earlier about the Tyree Nichols case, I had to type it up and look at videos. It's depressing. Depressing. Justin Smith, he trying to uh, testify in his own defense. You know why? When they were sitting in there and I was looking at them, I seen them over there. They were sitting in there. No matter how strong a lawyer you got, the tape don't lie. Now they starting to play the video. Everybody got to relive that moment, even the ones that did it. Now look at them. I want to testify in my own defense against legal advice because what the lawyer is telling him, he not ready to accept it. He not really. It's like standing in line, trying to act stoic in line. Going to the guillotine, then you see what that blade do when you get close enough to see the person in front of you get their head chopped off. Now, all of a sudden, you don't want to go no more. It's too late for that. It's too late for that. Tyree Nichols suffered, y'all. He suffered. He suffered in the ambulance. He suffered in the street when they went and lied to his mom and them. 
He suffered when they sat there and laughed at him and a whole bunch of police officers came hearing this frantic call of a crazed man the size of rope beating the hell out of all these big members of the scorpion team. What kind of scorpions sting themselves with their own tail? You beat him because you maced yourself and had to run after him. Y'all look like the three stooges out there and you should have beat each other because you didn't follow proper police protocol. You didn't follow it. The guy that trained them, powerful testimony. Damn, I wish I was there to see it. Uh, we didn't teach him that. Remember we talked about that? I said, they're going to play that tape. They're going to get an expert. And the guy going to be like, uh, we didn't teach that. We didn't teach that. We, didn't, we definitely ain't teach that shit. What happened? Same shit. Did it. Get them. Get them. I want y'all to pay attention to something. You notice the one with the least amount of time and the one with the greatest amount of time took deals already. That's why the panic is. Remember, Desmond Mill Jr. came late. When Tyree Nichols was running up the street, Justin Smith and Bean was chasing him. Justin Smith is the one that caught him. Because you remember, if you go back in my library, in these videos on this channel, I showed you each one of their individual body cams that I got off the uh, thing that wasn't out to the public. Once it came out to the public, nobody knew where to get it. I got all of the videos with the help of somebody from Memphis that sent me the links. I had all of their videos. I showed you every one of their video from start to finish, all the graphicness and everything. You seen it. He chased them down, caught him. Some of them claim they ain't hit him. Well, Emmett Martin's body cam shows Justin Smith and Tadarius Bean hitting him. Now what you gotta say? They played Desmond Mills Jr. When he trailed the ambulance and his police car to the, on the way to the hospital. And that's another thing I want you guys to notice. They wasn't speeding on the way to the hospital like it was an emergency with Tyree Nichols in the car. Said he was out without uh, a pulse for 25 minutes. He was on the ground. Basically gone. And they took pictures of him while he suffered. None of them rendered aid. Not even Field Lieutenant Dwayne Smith, the uh, field supervisor. You couldn't look at that man <clears throat> and say, hey, how did this happen? Who was out here when this happened? What did y'all do to him? You better tell the truth because this is not proper police training or protocol. You never did that. They treated this man like he was less than nothing. They terrorized him. They beat him. Kicked him. Punched him. He screamed for his mother. And finally, they killed him. They killed him. I've seen police videos that were horrific, but this by far is one of the worst I've seen. In fact, this is the worst I've seen. Rodney King was bad, but it was from a distance. You didn't have body cam footage and all of that audio. When you put the audio to the visual of what they did to Harry Nichols, it's shameful. 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 They're looking stupid. Haley already didn't distance himself. I mean, yeah, distance himself from them. So I want to see what comes out with his strategy. Because Justin Smith is about to crack, and I love it. He's about to crack. Just like you cracked on Tyree Nichols, you about to crack. I told you before, we told, I said he looked like the weakest one. He looked like the weakest one. Desmond Mills Jr., took the deal first. I'll testify in anything. The deal was he'll get no more than 15 years. In a surprise move three weeks ago, Emmett Martin, the third, the one that did the most damage, because they said Tyree Nichols died from blunt force trauma. When did he get, receive the blunt force trauma? When he was stood up and held by Justin Smith and to Darius Bean, when Emmett Martin tried to knock his head off 
with all of those volleys from a man that's like 6'4", 260, an NFL tight end, punching a man that's prone and can't even put his hands up, already uh, tired and winded and maced. He couldn't see the blows coming, and you punch this man in the face. None of y'all act like y'all could handcuff him. He ran a mile. I took you guys, remember? I took you to the exact corner where he was beat. And I showed you when they ran up to him and they lost him, that little dip off he went through. I seen it when I, I said, that's where he went. And I showed it to you guys. He ran a mile, fast as he could. They chased this dude down like a slave and then beat him to death. I'm trying to catch the thought I was talking about before they, before all that. But Emmett Martin III beat him up real bad. If you looked at the body cam, I can't remember whose body camera it was. When they put Tyree Nichols in the, the uh, ambulance and started working on him immediately because he was already messed up. They start working on him immediately, trying to keep him alive. What did you see? Emmett Martin standing there, looking in the ambulance, big as hell, breathing, looking mean. Like he was ready to go in there and get him again. Now he'll, his punishment is, he'll get, uh, with him taking a deal, he'll get no more than 40 years. So I want you to look. 40 years, 15 years. Between 40 and 15 is what they're going to get. These are first time offenders. You know, the feds go by a point system. It's like a chart that tell you exactly the time frame of amount of time and months that you'll get. They getting high numbers already. High numbers already. I seen the federal prosecutor. The prosecutor that, that you'll see, you'll see him. I seen him. He stood right in front of me. I was standing next to uh, Rovon Wells. He stood right in front of me and he spoke to her. Everybody came out and greeted him. Hey, I'll be working on your case. Such and such, this and that. We're going to do some good. It is what it is. They put themselves in this position. And I'm going to tell you another thing. You know what's sad about this? And a lot of people don't really talk about stuff like this. Some of these officers have families. There's some children out there that are going to lose their father. Women that are going to lose their husband. And it's sad because they never thought about that when they beat this man as if he wasn't a human being and he didn't have a family. Like he didn't have a mom and a dad. People that loved him. That's the part that's messed up about this. A lot of people are going to get hurt in this. But you still want justice because some punishment has to go along with the crime. But a lot of people are going to get hurt in this. I don't know the families of these officers. And you know, when we do these videos and we get turned up and we think about what happened and, you know, we put ourselves in position. I could have very well, well easily been Tyree Nichols. Range Road, what was it, East Range Road? I can't remember, East, East or West Range Road. That road, I was on that road. My big thing I would like to learn in the court case is if Emmett Martin, who said Tyree was speeding and wouldn't stop, was swerving and wouldn't stop, if his car, if he flashed those blue lights, and he still didn't stop if you claim he didn't. Because I'm going to tell you something. That road is dark and it's a long stretch between lights. If somebody roll up on you, especially with the way, you know, Memphis is with how people run up on you. Now, I would have stopped at that light, too, because at that light, it's street lights in all different directions. And it'd be people publicly pulling up there. So in case somebody's going to do something, they might be hesitant because they are witnesses. Maybe he didn't know you was a cop. This is stupid. This is stupid. This should have never happened. Guy said, I did not train him like that. And now you're starting to see it. That hot seat they on, starting to get real hot. And he's strapped to the seat. It's going to be what it's going to be, and it is what it is. You shouldn't have been put, your, put yourself in that position in the first place. You couldn't put handcuffs on them. That's the big thing. You couldn't put handcuffs on them. 
All your police training and protocol went out the window when you saw Tyree Nichols and he was like Samson in the Bible and you couldn't do nothing. No training work whatsoever. Because I'm going to tell you something in closing. This is all it is. They talk to that man like common street, like common street thugs. They beat him like common street thugs. They should be treated like common street thugs. But Demetrius Haley said, and I quote, when he was talking, running his mouth at the end, talking about like it was a war story. He said, oh man, he went for Martin's gun, Emmett Martin III, he went for my gun. We said to ourselves, man, we're going to have to kill it. We said, oh Lord, we're going to have to kill this man. And you did. And you did. Congra cra ah, congratulations for being a prophet in the future of your own fucking destruction. I know you watch my videos. Of course, I seen that look you gave me when we was in court. You'll get the chance to look at me again when I come down there, and I mean this. I don't care if I gotta use my last red cent. When I come down there and look you in your face when they give you your time after reading that guilty verdict. I'm Stock Market Steve for the Dynamic Reason channel. As always, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Justice for Tyree. Let's get it.